Hello everyone and welcome back to Warhammer Age of Sigmar Warcry. It's been a while, so forgive any uh, mistakes going forward because we are going to be rusty here. But we are back with Warcry. There's a space in the schedule to start bringing this back every so often again now. So we're going to be playing it today and today it is going to be the Maggotkin of Nurgle. Or is that what they're called? Yes it is, but it's the Demons of Nurgle this time, not the Rotbringers. Their names are very similar if you don't say them that often. Going up against a Stormcast Eternals list, the Thunderstrike Eternals, to be our Stormcast, to be exact. And the, well actually, let's go look at a closer look at the Nurgle Demons here today because there's a bit of a story about them. So here is the Maggot Kin of Nurgle broken into Dagger Hammer Shield 322 in the order of left, camera left to camera right. And all of these are old 40k sculpts with the exception of who's going to represent the leader, which is a, a kit-bashed one uh, I used to use as a stand-in demon prince using the sassy um, uh, Nurgling. But today he's going to be a stand-in for a Plague Ridden, which would normally be on a smaller base, so he's going to have one inch less movement to compensate for the fact he's on a 60 mil base. But he is the leader today and is represented by this model here. He is with one Plague Drone, as I say, in the uh, hammer. The dagger is just three Nurgling bases, also from 40k, but they were interchangeable back in the day. They probably still are, I'm not sure. And then finally, a second Plague Drone with a Thrall in the form of a Chaos Spawn, and they are the shield. So this was all just ancient 40k sculpts I happened to have from back when I had them mixed with um, Death Guard, when that was allowed. And I was looking at Warcry, and I was like, oh, hang on. These are actually usable in Warcry. And granted, I'm sure some of the kits have been updated these days, but hopefully it's not different base sizes. I think the only difference with the Plague Drones these days is they have proper bases rather than the, the Perspex see-through ones. So yeah, we're going to use them today. The only, like, not as you see it, is the leader. And as I say, we're accounting for the fact he's on a slightly larger base. Any excuse to get the sassy Nurgling on the table. And here are your Thunderstrike Stormcast. They've been on the table before. There is one stand in miniature just to make up the points to 995, so just shy of the thousand. Dagger, Hammer, Shield, 222. And we have the Lord Impertent with his faithful Griffhound as the dagger. The hammer and the shield are identical. It is two sets of two Praetors. And this is Iona, Leona, I keep forgetting her name from Underworlds, but she's basically equipped the same. So she's just being a stand-in for a fourth Praetor, but she has exactly the same stats. She's not here as herself, so she's just a, a stand-in since we don't have a fourth Praetor painted up. So, simple as that. Uh, we're going to randomise mission and deployment type off-camera to get these a bit more succinct. Granted, I've been blathering a lot already, but we'll show you what we're playing and then get both sides set up. And here's what we ended up with. Mismatched opponents is our deployment type. So the hammer for the defender starts in the middle of the map with the dagger bottom left three inches in on either side of the corners and the shield down there. And the attacker's shield is coming in above them. Hammer on this side, dagger on that side. Everybody on the table from turn one. And the main victory condition we got was on top of the world. Sorry, on top of the realm. If there's no platforms in the battlefield drawing the victory condition, there is precisely one. The highest platform on the battlefield is the seat of power. If multiple platforms could be the seat of power randomly determined. Well, that's not relevant. If there's any Realm Shaper engines on the battlefield, nope, haven't made that yet. The battle ends after four battle rounds. When the battle ends, if only one player has fighters on the seat of power, that player is the winner. Any other result is a draw. So the seat of power is the remnants of whatever this used to be. Simple as that. We will get both sides deployed and be back with everything set up after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And with that said, we're back with everyone set up. I believe I didn't say on camera who was attacker defender. Um, the Stormcast won the role and chose to be attacker and actually ended up being incredibly thematically apt as a result of that because it looks like there's a chaos ritual going on and they're here to try and stop it by taking control of the seat of power. So with the Nurgle Demons being defenders, their hammer is directly in the centre of the table which also is where the seat of power happens to be. That was Again, it was just random. So the Plague Ridden and the Plague Drone not Blight Drone. Yeah, the Blight Drones are the metal ones from 40k, right? Again, it's been such a long time since I played 40k. Either way, they're in the middle. 
The Nurglings are to the bottom left, I'll show you them in a second, and the Spawn and the other drone are in the bottom right. The Stormcast, we have two Praetors coming in left side of the table, two Praetors coming in top of the table, and the Lord Impertant and his Griffhound on the right flank. And they are just trying to get in there, take control, and get on top of this scenery, because that's where the, the ritual magic is, I guess. So, we can just come over here real quick to show you where those are in the bottom right corner. Over here is our gaggle of Nurglings, and I have no idea how this matchup is going to go, really. So we're just going to see by playing four rounds. Let's jump into round one. And here's how the dice roll panned out. The Nurgle Demons have a double one, a double two, and they've used their wild die to create a double five, leaving them with just a single three. And then for the Stormcast, they had a triple four. They've used their wild die to turn a single six into a double, leaving them with two singles, meaning that they are taking first activation. The Lord Impertant got the game started moving his massive four inches forward and then cracking out what's called in his weapon profile bow, but again I always like to pretend he's shooting lightning from his fingers. Minimum range 3, maximum range 15. He's shot into the Plague Drone that's on the Seed of Power and it's four attacks, strength four versus toughness four, so he was looking for fours. You saw the dice on the table there, he got a single normal hit through for one whole wound. First up for the demons was one of the gaggle of Nurgling bases. They are pretty fast by Nurgle standards, they have 5 inch base and that was enough from where he started to just immediately get into base to base with the Praetor there. He attacked, Nurglings have a lot of attacks, it's 6 attacks, it's only strength 3 though, so they were needing 5 pluses, but he did pretty well with it, or they I guess because it's a whole bunch of them, a dozen at least. And got 2 normal hits through and a crit, normal hits just do 1 wound, crits do 3. So a total of 5 damage to that Praetor there, which is pretty decent for just a, a gaggle of Nurglings. The Praetor that just got hit decided to activate to test the toughness of a Nurgling. So across 2 attack actions of 3 attacks each, that's 6 in total, there was 4 successes, 0 crits unfortunately. But they do 2 damage base, 5 on a crit. So that was 8 damage to the Nurglings. Nurglings have 20 wounds. So that's a fourth of the, uh, over a fourth of them gone. The Praetors have 22 wounds, so they've got a slight edge there. If they'd gotten some crits there, it wouldn't have been in any question, but didn't roll that well. Over the far end of the table, the Chaos Spawn, the Thrall for the Demons of Nurgle, activated, spent their double one on Rush to get a little bit of extra distance that put them at six inch movement. That was enough to get into base to base with the Griffhound who you can't even really see because the Chaos Spawn is obscuring it so much. Then attacked, it was 4 attacks, strength 4 with 1-4 um, one damage split I think, going up against the toughness 4 of the Griffhound. Managed to get just 2 bog standard hits through for a total of 4 wounds. Oh, so I guess it must be 2 for the split and the Chaos Spawn's damage. Going to start putting a little bit of pressure on the Seed of Power, so the Praetor, one of the two Praetors to the very northern middle tip of the map activated, just did a double move and has ended up there, facing down the Plague Ridden. The second of the three Nurgling bases activated, spent their double two on Rush to get that extra inch of movement on movement actions, and got into combat with the Praetor that's already fighting a bunch of Nurglings. Attacked, six attacks, all of them rolled out, a single hit and a crit got through for a total of four more wounds taking him to 9 missing out of his 22. And the Praetor that's next to the one engaged with two groups of Nurglings has decided to peace out and just leave him to it because they don't want to all get tied up in combat. And he spent their double on Rush as well and has moved closer to the centre because the centre is ultimately what matters here. And the last of the three Nurgling bases giggled and farted their way 10 inches over two movement actions to where you can see them there just at the base of the Seat of Power. The stand-in Praetor at the top of the board just did two normal movement actions and has ended up there, behind the one that rushed earlier in the round. The Blight Drone that started in the bottom right corner of the map activated moved twice, I think they moved six inches it was, with flying, so they just hopped over to help defend the centre there. That left just the Griffhound for the Stormcast and is, they're quite happy to just leave that Chaos Spawn kind of tied up in combat over there. So just struck out at it twice, four attacks at strength, four twice, one success and a crit in the first load of attacks and just two normal successes. It's one slash four damage, so in total that is seven. So the Plague Drone that's on the Seed of Power is actually just going to stay there, even though it doesn't really matter until the last turn, but they don't want to make it easy for the Stormcast to just put a bunch of bodies on there, especially with how big their base is. They're taking up the line, share the platform there. So he's just going to stay there, which meant it just came down to the uh, Plague Ridden, 
aka the stand-in sassy nurgling that's being used. They moved into combat with the closest Praetor. They attacked for four attacks, only at strength three with a two-four damage split. Uh, the dice are not on screen, they were down here, he whiffed entirely. So no damage there. He's a cheap he's like he's only 90 points. He's a cheap and cheerful leader just to reflect his sassy nature. So that is going to take us to the end of round one. Because of the nature of on top of the realm, it only matters who has the seat of power at the end of the game, so there's no points to tally. We're just going to jump into the dice rolls for round two. And here's how the dice shook out for the top of round two. Quad one for the demons of Nurgle, and they turned a single six into a double six with their wild die for the turn, leaving them with just a three. They don't seem to particularly care if they go first or second. They've got the numbers advantage and they have the seat of power. The Stormcast, the Storm uh, Thunderstrike, they had a double one, they had a double six, which they've converted into a triple using their wild die for the turn, leaving them with two singles, so they will have first activation again. So the first to activate for round two for the Thunderstrike Stormcast Eternals was the Lord Impertent who moved into close combat range with the Plague Ridden, Pox Ridden, I keep forgetting which it is, Plague Ridden, and attacked with his Blessed Warhammer 4 attacks, strength 4 against toughness 4. He got just a crit through. Uh, they were considering using their reaction for hard to wound, what is it called? Uh, impossible to wound. And it's just as well they didn't bother because all it would have done would save them one point of damage. One crit got through for five wounds. That said, that is a third of his total wounds. And he's technically not done yet because he is spending their triple six on coordinated strike. Which you can only do if you're a Thunderstrike Stormcast hero. Pick a number of visible friendly fighters equal to half of this ability rounded up. It was a six, so up to three. That are within nine inches of him. They get to make an either a bonus move action or a bonus attack action. So I believe within six inches, it's just going to be these two. Yeah, she's slightly out, or they are slightly out rather. But these two are going to do a bonus action each. And the one that's already locked in combat is certainly going to attack. I think the other will probably just have to do a move or a climb. So after that, the Praetor that was back here has actually moved to within an inch of this edge of the terrain, which means they're within an inch of the drone up top, which means they can engage when they activate at some point in the round. The Praetor was already engaged with the Plague Ridden, attacked, only one attack. It's three dice strength five. This time they did use the reaction for impossible to wound. In the end, it did only save them one wound again because only a crit got through, so it was five wounds down to four putting him at 9 missing of his 15. The Nurgling base that was over here did 2 moves in order to tie up that Praetor in combat, so it would have to do a disengage to get away from him first, or stand and fight, basically just to buy time. Well, trying to finish the job that they started, the Praetor that got that free attack from the Lord Impertin activated and swung into the Plague Ridden twice, who was missing... how many wounds was it? 6. Sorry, no, they had six left, I should say. So, a total of six attacks at strength five against toughness four, so they're only looking for threes. He could have used up his last remaining action for impossible to wound again. It wouldn't have made a difference, because here is the roll. No crits, but each of these is two damage. So, two, four, six, eight, ten. And it would have been five if they'd used impossible to wound, which still would have been... Oh, actually, no, he would have lived on one. He would have lived... <laughs> on one had he just used up his entire action as reactions but he didn't so too late now unfortunately the sassy nurgling on a base too large for the model he is representing is defeated the unengaged blight drone on the battlefield floor activated moved into close combat with the lord impertin and attacked four dice strength four versus toughness five managed only to get a crit through which is four damage and I think the Lord Impertin has like 30 something wounds, he's pretty tanky. So you just have to take my word for it that she is there, but the Praetor down here represented by Iona Leona from Underworld is there and she is within one of this Blight Run. There is not enough platform to get up there, but she can attack him from there. So she did that twice, total of six attacks, three normal hits through with the dice you can just see now, and one crit, meaning she did 11 wounds to him so 12 in total with the one he got from the bow in turn 1 from the Lord Impertent. They're tanky though, they have 30 wounds each, so not even half missing yet. The wounded Nurgling base down here activated, just trying to chip away at the Praetor they're locked in combat with. First set of 6 attacks, there was only one success, it was a crit for 3 wounds. 
Second set of attacks though, two crits and a normal hit for a total of seven extra wounds. So that's him up to 12, 13, 14. That's him up to 19 wounds. He has three left. And since he's probably about to die, kind of forced hand there for him to activate, swinging into the Nurgling base he's already wounded. And he is remarkably consistent across the two sets of attacks. Got two normal hits in each for a total of eight wounds, which is precisely what he did the first time you hit him. So that Nurgling base is missing 16 of its 20. And inevitably it was the other Nurgling base who activated, so he should have one of these now. And he almost didn't do it. His first set of six attacks only had one bog standard success for a single wound, but his second sec set of six attacks, that's hard to say, had a crit in it, which is enough that this Praetor is out there. Took his whole activation though, so not too shabby. You know, on that note, he might counter with... Um, What's it called? Thunderous Retreat? Hang on. Uh, no, he can't do it. It's a reaction, not a spend dice for. So he's already had his turn, so he had no actions to give up. This Praetor activated, decided to take some swings into the Nurgling, and across the two sets of attacks, got a single success in each. Whiffed pretty bad. So that's a total of four wounds, which doesn't matter much to a Nurgling. That was pretty bad, but you know what's worse? Getting zero successes. The Plague Drone that's currently holding the Seat of Power decided to attack the Praetor that's out of line of sight behind it down here. And across two sets of four attacks, Strength 4 versus Toughness 5, did not get a single hit through. So nothing. Last activation for the Thunderstrike Eternals was the Griffin that's locked into combat with this Chaos Spawn. Did two sets of four attacks, got a total of two hits through. Oh. I forgot that was a crit actually, so it's not just 3 damage, that is 4, 5, 6 damage, which is a lot better actually. And they're not done yet, even though they have done 2 attacks, because they're going to spend the double 1 on darting attack. This fighter makes a bonus attack action, then they make a bonus disengage action, so that's what's about to happen. Well, the bonus attack action didn't yield much, just a single wound, but hey, whatever. And then they have disengaged to over there, so that's their turn done. Um, there's still the spawn itself to go, and I think that's it actually. Well, the Thrall Chaos spawn decided to chase down its prey, engaging in combat with the Griffin again, attacking once, four dice strength, four I believe, managed to get two crits and a hit for a casual 10 wounds, and that means 14 in total of a 12 wound or 13, yeah, 12 wound Griffin, so the Griffin is out of there, and that does take us to the end of round two. Again, there's no points to tally up, so here's just a pulled back view of the board state as we end round two and go into the latter half of the game. And here is how the dice shook out for the penultimate turn. Triple one and a double four for the Demons of Nurgle. They used their wild die to make a double three. The Stormcast Eternals had a double five, which they used their wild die to turn into a triple. They rolled a double one, had two singles, so once again, they are going first. You may have seen this coming, but the Lord and Peritant got the turn started again, swinging into the Plague Drone that is locked in combat with him, and only getting a total of three bog standard hits through for six wounds, not very much when they have 30, but he is spending that triple five they made on another coordinated strike, so you round up so he, he can pick up to three teammates within nine to do a bonus action. Nine inches covers all three of the surviving Praetors, because again, keep in mind there's one hidden down here, there's one there with the Nurgling, and one here who's not locked in combat at all. So they're all going to do actions and we'll be back once those are resolved. Well, that isn't particularly bombastic, but the Praetor that was here has moved, so he's within an inch of the Blade Drone up here, to a uh, Plague Drone, sorry, to engage with him. The one that was already within one hit him, got one normal hit through for two wounds, so rather than add a new token, we're just going to flip that one to a three. So he's up to 14, almost half his wounds gone. And this one down here struck out at the Nurglings, locked in combat with him, and got two normal hits through, uh, sorry, one normal hit through rather, for two more damage, and we'll consolidate those damage tokens in a second. The Chaos Spawn got into combat with the Lord Imperton, holding him in place there by getting in behind him, and got one normal hit through against him in the one round of attacking he could do for a total of two damage. So that three there is being replaced by five, and it's a total of six wounds on the Lord and Pertent. The out of sight Praetor that's back down here attacked twice into the Plague Drone sitting on the Seat of Power, did really well, got two normal hits through and a crit for a total of nine wounds, so we're gonna take that one away and add a 10, because that's a difference of nine. They're up to 23 wounds. 
they only have seven left and they really do need to clear them off that this turn so they can get up there because if they don't it's going to be real iffy in the final round. One of the now unengaged Nurgling bases here activated spent their double three it was I think whatever their lowest value double was for rush and moved and got into combat just to further put pressure on that Praetor there. So the other Praetor that was freely moved as part of the triple spent by the Lord Imperiton there uh, is within one so he attacked and he across two attacks got a single hit and a crit through but that is actually seven wounds so he definitely should have used his reaction to reduce that by two because that is precisely enough on top of the 23 he has to take him to 30 meaning that he is out of there. Now that's still a problem because it took his entire turn to do that and the other plague drone can still activate and they have fly so it's not like they're going to be hindered by climbing so he's just going to do a disengage action and go up there and still block most of the things so you can't stand on it which means they're still going to have the same problem in the final round which is to try and do his remaining what 24 wounds that's going to be a big problem and yep sure enough just to make sure that happened that plague drone activated disengaged from combat with Lord Imperton flew up onto the platform positioned as such that you can't wholly fit the base of a stormcast eternal on there um he can still be fought but they can't just stand on it to contest for a draw they have to kill him well speaking of never remembering to use impossible to wound the nurgling base here was attacked by the praetor twice that's his full activation he got two normal hits and two crits through for a total of 14 damage on top of the six they already had that's 20 that's a dead Nurgling base. They are splatted and out of there. So we're already to the last activation for the round, which was the Nurgling base whose damage oh, did not come with him. There we go. Not that it's probably going to matter much. He couldn't get into engagement range with the Praetor there, but he is bearing down on them. At the end of the penultimate round, this is the board state, and there is one thing left to do for the Lord Imperton and his three Praetors that are still alive. They have to kill this. They have to do 24 wounds and still get somebody up there otherwise it's a draw so it's going to be tough for them because they're tied down in combat for most of them but let's go see what the dice are like for the start of the final round and here are the dice uh, uh, all the ones getting rolled by the demons of nurgle here this time it was a triple not a quad but hey they also rolled a double three and they used their last wild die to turn a single six into a double now this time they're going to remember the reactions because it might save their life and save the game for them the Stormcast also rolled a double one, they rolled a double five, which they've turned into a triple five with their wild die, retaining two singles, so they are once again going first, and I'll give you three guesses what their first action is going to be. Well, prior to any rolls happening, I was going to say there isn't much the Lord and Puritan can do, because if he did a disengage action from the spawn, he'd then have to move to within an inch of the drone and then not be able to do anything, because he's used up his two actions, at which point he would spend his triple, which is the plan all along, to do another coordinated strike which is still going to happen but if you can notice the dice there for no other reason than there's nothing better for him to do he swung into the spawn here his four attacks in his first barrage got three crits his second barrage of four attacks got two crits and a hit so that is a total of 15 20 25 27 wounds so he actually managed to kill the spawn who I think has 30 wounds in total but he had 14 damage on him already. So he just obliterated that spawn with his blessed warhammer and then we are still doing the second part which was the plan. Spending that triple five on coordinated strike. All three of his other Praetors are going to get to do something. Unfortunately it doesn't say a disengage, it's only a bonus move or a bonus attack. So the one that's locked in combat with the Nurglings is just going to have to hit the Nurglings for, any, for nothing better to do. Oh, after something so epic happening, that was pretty bad. Across all those Praetors doing one attack action each, this one into the Nurgling, these two into that Plague Drone. Uh, yeah, one normal hit got through to the Plague Drone, so that's two damage, so that one gets flipped to three, and that is it. That is not good. And the Plague Drone that's all but securing the win for the Demons of Nurgle up there activated, spent a double on the double three. On Venomous Sting, you select a visible enemy to fighter within one inch, you roll a die and it's a two plus, and that means they're not allowed to move or disengage. And he did it on the left of the two Praetors that are locked in combat with him. So she can't move or disengage now. She can still hit him, 
But, uh, oh yeah, speaking of attacking, he attacked the other Praetor. Two sets of four attacks. In total, got two normal hits through. That's four wounds, which isn't going to matter much for what is left of the game. The Praetor, who just got stung and is, uh, and is unable to move, attacked twice into the Plague Drone. Did really well. Four bog standard hits, one crit. That is 13 more wounds, putting at 1621 of its 30. So there is a very slight chance. The wounded Nurgling base originally wanted to try and lock those Praetors in combat so it would be impossible for them to like disengage, attack and climb. Couldn't fit through though, swung into, or rather got into base to base, then swung into this Praetor, did ridiculously well, got 3 crits, 1 normal hit for 10 wounds, leaving him with 12. And unfortunately I think that's game. The other Praetor that's there did 2 attacks into the Plague Drone and got 2 normal hits through only, so that's 4 more wounds taking him to 25 I think. Either way definitely not 30 so he is gonna live. Now technically there is still a way to make it a draw. Definitely can't win for the Stormcast now but this Nurgling is going to be left to activate. It will try and kill that Praetor. If he lives he can go disengage and end within an inch. Oh actually no you're not allowed to do a disengage and end within an inch of an enemy. You can't do that so no it is a loss. Thought he would disengage and then attack and then there's a chance he could kill it, in which case it would be a draw. No, you're not allowed to end within an inch of an enemy. That is it. Yeah, there's no way to win. So we might as well just call it right there. The Demons of Nurgle win. So was it slightly unfair that there was only one raised platform on the entire table? Whoops, as I hit the camera. And that the play drones at base is large enough that it makes it impossible for anything else to stand up there with it. Yeah, but that's why we fought within an inch as far as the rules read it seems like that's possible like you can fight upwards as long as it's within an inch so hopefully that was still fine if it wasn't hey that was a chance to try and balance it by allowing that still wasn't good enough though the play drones are just too tanky toughness 4 30 wounds very very tanky so they completed the ritual whatever it happened to be and that is going to do it for a return to warhammer warcry uh, if you want to see more in the future do let me know by leaving a comment liking the video, all that good stuff. If you want to support the channel in general, please do consider becoming a channel member. Uh, it helps out and you get exclusive early access to certain series early before anybody else. Or if you're interested in just picking up board games, miniatures or whatever else for yourself, and um, paints as well, check out my channel sponsor. If you go via the affiliate link and pick up something for yourself, I get compensated if you use the link. They do carry 40k, Warcry, old Games Workshop stuff along with most if not all the other games I cover on the channel. Either way, thank you very much for watching, enjoy the rest of your day and see you next time. Stop for now.